Welcome back to a very sunny four golf in Chester. You're with the average golfer and we're about to look at some new product from Ping. I always enjoy club testing. I get pretty excited when new clubs are released, but even more so this morning because what I've unboxed is two sets of irons from Ping, which look pretty special to me. Love the look of them, but it's all about performance. And that's what we're gonna take a look at very, very shortly. I'm gonna split this test into two parts. And we're gonna start, I should mention, by looking at the Ping i210 new iron from ping we're going to have a look at who it's aimed at how it performs but first of all we're going to move over have a little sit down we're going to discuss the the tech that's packed into this club and talk about how it looks right before we get to some balls let's have a look at this i10 uh, looks and what ping is saying in terms of the technology that's packed into this club um, which is going to help us perform better out there on the course and i think both with the i500 and the i210, one of the things that's noticed, they're very much an evolution of previous models. So this has got a lot of aesthetically very, very similar to the i200. Uh, it looks like the sort of classic cavity back. I'll throw out some images now. There is a, if you look at the back of the club, there's an elastomer insert, which is claiming to be 50% stronger and returns more energy to the ball. And at the back of that club, you'll also see markings are very, very minimal indeed. Just this I210, very much a minimalistic look. It's a hydro pearl chrome finish. We're talking about precision performance, very clean in appearance, a more compact head. Um, so the image I'm gonna throw up you now is just gonna show where this elastomer insert sits and the difference between, you can see between the i200 model and the i210 is how they've increased the size of that, which is supposed to, um, at impact, give a soft feel and a greater energy transfer into the ball at impact, we shall soon see. I think for me, uh, in terms of looks, very much a classic. I think this sits into the sort of player's iron category, very, very compact, with a cavity back. I like the look of it, I like how this sits behind the ball, and ultimately, I'm really excited to know how this thing performs, and if some of these claims, this softer feel that, for example, that uh, Ping have just mentioned, will I see that when I start hitting some golf balls? And there's only one way to find that out, is for me to shut up, move over there, and let's get into some golf balls. Right, this ball's hit, we've talked about how it looks, we've talked about how it feels, now let's talk about how it performs on dry ball data with Trackman, and here's the numbers, let's get straight stuck in. The one thing that you'll see across all these numbers is just, for me, consistency. And uh, I ended up hitting eight balls, I vary, I normally hit five, but I got a little bit excited and carried on a bit here. And uh, let's talk about the carry distance, uh, averaging 152, this is a 33 degree lofted seven iron, so again, very much where you'd expect it to be back down to traditional numbers uh, in what you would see from that type of loft on a golf club. Um, peak height 99 feet, um, let's have a launch angle 21.2 and then let's go back to the beginning and look at uh, spin rate of 6175. Now then for those of you who watch my videos regularly you'll say wow what's just gone on with that spin number for those of you who don't let me just explain i don't get a fantastic amount of spin when hitting golf balls uh, in particular with the irons and um seven iron spin i would say for the majority of clubs that i test um five and a half thousand spin is a decent performing seven iron for me in terms of a spin number so to be getting an average of six one and you can see there's some numbers up there quite above 6,000 revs. I'm astonished by that, I really am. And I think that's a very much a positive in terms of the consistency of this overall approach, what comes from this I210 for me. Um, the numbers in terms of carry was very, very consistent. There'll always be a variation in ball strike from the average golfer, uh, therefore a variation in the sort of front to back numbers. But when I hit the right ball, a decent ball for me, the number was bang on. I'm in and around this sort of 150, 152 mark with a seven iron, spinning it up there in the 6,000 revs. And that is absolutely as good as I've performed with a club in terms of dry ball data on Trackman since I've been testing. Now, there's a statement. 
So it's all about consistency. This club really is solid. Solid in terms of numbers, solid in terms of performance, love the feel of it. Now, the ultimate thing is, can we take what we've found out in, in a cl closed environment, in a controlled environment, can I take that out onto the golf course? Can it perform in different situations out there on the course? And that's what we're gonna find out for in part two. So let's get on the course. Okay, so we've tested in for golf for some dry ball data. We've been out there on the course and I've probably paid uh, two rounds that had the camera with me and uh, one round that I didn't. So all the clubs, so, and, and just to let you know, I've had um, the utility iron, I think it is. There's a U on the bottom of it. I assume it stands for utility. 50 degrees worth of loft on that. I've had a nine iron, a seven iron, a five iron on, on both this and the i500 uh, so just to let you know what i've been hitting in and around the course so we've done everything i thought we'd finish off back in the office and have a little bit of a chat and an overall assessment and evaluation did i learn a great deal more out on the course um i think i was probably even more impressed if i'm being brutally honest because um the one thing that i noted out there on the course is often different from inside hitting from mats is um and the wider open space i think is the acoustics the sound and which resonates in feel. And I think that was even improved. I liked it in the driving range, no problem there from off the map, but it was even, it's one of the softest feeling irons. It's a, don't forget, this isn't a forge club head, but it was one of the softest feeling irons I've ever hit. This uh, elastomer, uh, was it polymer insert, um, in the back of this club face, if that's what's producing the uh, extra soft feel, then it really, really does work. And I like that kind of, I don't like the sort of clicky sound off irons i like that butter soft and like i said it's the closest thing i've ever had to hitting a forged iron it's brilliant what they've done there um but i think the overall assessment is this i mean it performed well on dry ball data its spin number for me was absolutely fantastic um i think in terms of looks it's very much a refined look it's very simplistic uh, and it's classy very much as what you'd expect from ping they're a class act as far as i'm concerned in everything they produce and i think this is another first class set of irons um, and it ticks every box for me and out there on the course like I said it did exactly that it was uh, and, and that coupled with so the performance coupled with that extra large sweet spot yet again that is uh, I've checked the face on these things and obviously there's a pattern that emerges it's never quite in that sense it's always spread around a bit from the average golfer but I never really seen that uh, in performance it was very consistent out there and uh, I certainly played more than well enough with these clubs as well so I, i'm impressed with them like i said there is a lot of good irons on the marketplace at the moment and this is another set that adds to that list it's all about what you're looking for these for me suited my eye very much so smaller compact head without being overly small i mean we're not talking minimal blade style here without being overly small but nice and compact thinnish top line face that gives plenty of uh, plenty of forgiveness across it all the numbers stacked up, throw in the high spin number as well, and the soft feel. 
these are really right up there with the best irons that I've tested for me personally uh, in this last 12 months or so. I'd seriously consider gaming these irons, that's how much I like them. Anyway, it's no use what I think, it's what you think and that's the all important bit. So as ever the recommendation is, forget what I've just said, get out there, try them yourself and make your own opinions. Once again, massive thank you to Ping to allowing me, the average golfer, access to these clubs pre-embargo. Uh, it's nice to be involved, so I appreciate that. And to you people out there for watching, thanks as ever. Give it a thumbs up, comments down below. I hope that I try to cover as much as possible I can when I do these video reviews, and uh, we're trying to make them better all the time. So hopefully we captured everything in there. I ain't gonna waffle on no longer. All done, thank you for watching, and see you soon.